And one of my favorite times about Youth Sunday is the rapid fire moment. Amen. And today we are going to be blessed by Phil Hartley with our rapid fire moment. Amen. Jimmy, come on, man. <laughs> All right. I don't do this that often, so. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read um, two verses. So let me see. First verse is from uh, Galatians 4, 5 through 7. God sent him to buy freedom for us, where he slaves, where we were slaves to the law so that we could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but a God's, God's own child. And since we are his child, God has made us his heir. All right, my second verse is Isaiah 61, 3. Uh, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, fest of praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. The um, reason I picked those two verses, the first verse talks about heirs, that we are part of his family, yeah. and that we shouldn't be, we should walk without doubt, bitterness, that we, we belong to the kingdom, and we just got to walk with authority in our actions, and just, we want to be, be part of God's child. Yeah. Uh, the other verse I picked is uh, about purpose in spite of I've been reading this plan um, your sin doesn't uh, define your purpose so <laughs> alright I'm going to read this uh, <laughs> got me man alright there is nothing valuable in his universe to God than you. He has sent his son to die your, in your place and claim the victory over sin so that you will you would no longer have to live in bondage to your past. Step into what he has done and is doing in your life. Live the purpose that you is called to live. So that's, you no, know, that's been on my heart, you know, trying to live in my purpose and take authority of, I know I have a fear of like public speaking sometimes, but you know, but you know, that's what I'm trying to do. And I, I just thank the Lord for my brother who the Lord has not given a spirit of fear, but of love, power and of sound mind. And just watching the Lord just develop him. Thank you, Jesus. So at this time, we're going to have the introduction of our speaker. And then after that, there will be a selection. So today, our speaker is elder intern, Dwayne Rawlins. And I would introduce him, but I... I I could not. His queen has to come up and give him the intro that she need, that he needs. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Fresh Anointing. This morning, I have the pleasure of introducing our minister, our elder intern, Dwayne Rawlins. Um, he is a man. He is a person that has introduced great balance into my life. You know, I like to do 
everything myself or rush and do this and that and impatience tries to come on me and I look and I'm like prayerful like oh we need to get this done and he's calm <laughs> he's at peace you know when I'm praying but I'm like okay Lord you're, are you telling me yet okay so he's like okay how about how about we just sit and wait on God for a little bit you know <laughs> down a little bit and he also introduces that to our young people you know they will come to youth group and they're upset and they don't they don't know where to go with this situation and he'll say okay well how about we make a plan first you know he'll give them a first step to do things and it's really been been a blessing to my life to just watch him and his ministry to other people whether the young people um, or our peers. And so we will have the privilege and, you know, enjoy the word that the Lord will send to through Dwayne this morning. Um, and I'm sure he'll give us just some balance and some clarity and some things to look at something a little different. Good morning. Hi, beautiful people. (laughs) Okay, so um, today's verse is from John 4, verse 23 and 24. Indeed, the time is coming, and it is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father is looking for people like that to worship him. presence is overwhelming. There's nothing like your presence. Oh, how I love this place. 
Hallelujah. 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 Scriptures say, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All day, all day, all through service, this this praise has been been on the edge, right there on the edge, and I've been trying to hold myself back and I'm saying, well, you can't shout, you can't sing too Lord, too hard because you got to, you got to, you got to speak and you got to save your voice, but there's something welling up on the inside of me. And I made, I made a perp, I made this purpose that, that I would live, I would move, 
with the mindset that God let anything tip me tip me over into praise. Let 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 me have a short trigger for for worshiping you for 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 singing your praises. We have so many triggers for so many different things. Quick to get angry, quick to get bitter, quick quick to to have unforgiveness, but 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 I want to have a short trigger to worship the almighty God. So I know it's preaching time, but but would you indulge me and would you join in me as as we raise our hands and and we worship this mighty God that we serve this this great God that we serve this conquering lion of the tribe of Judah this risen savior that died for our sins that looks on us with love that extends grace that is better to me than I deserve that loves me when I'm unlovable that forgives me when I break his heart that turns to provides for me when I mess things up that extends grace and favor this God that loves me with an unfailing God love God I love you I love you I love you I worship you almighty God you are the king of glory you are great Jehovah you are Yahweh you are Emmanuel God with us till God would you come and saturate this place inhabit our praise oh God right now we worship you 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 almighty god we say you are good you are great you are mighty you are mighty what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve we pour our love on you we open up our souls and worship you for you are a great god Great are your works. Great are your works. Great are your works. You do marvelous things. You do marvelous things. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh by your presence. I'm overwhelmed by your presence, God.
thank you. Thank you for drawing close to us here. That we would be able to touch you and be healed. That we would be able to touch you and be healed. That we would touch you and be healed. God, we extend our hands to you and touch you. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for healing us in our broken places, in our secret places. Thank you for touching us. We love you, God. So God, now, would you speak to our hearts? Would you bring your rhema word to the areas that need it so desperately? Would you cause change to come in the areas where we need it so desperately? Would you bring healing? Would you set captives free? Would you transform our lives as we stand in your presence? God, send your ruah into us and breathe on those places that are dead and cause the dry bones to rise. God, I decrease that your people might hear you. Take these lips of clay and do with them as you wish. In Jesus' name I pray. Would you clap your hands? All right. One day I'm going to get up here and jump straight into the word. One day I'm going to do it. I'm going to shock everybody. I'm going to just straight to the notes. <laughs> uh, well, it is great to see everyone here. You lost an hour of sleep, but you still made it. Amen. I want to give honor to our pastors. It's good to have you all back. Something about looking over there and seeing them over there makes us feel better, doesn't it? But we're glad you guys got some rest. Pastor, you got one year older, but you got better. You got better. Yeah, yeah. I want to say I love my wife. Yeah. She's so good to me. So, so good to me. Makes it easy to be me. So I honor you, baby. I love you so much. So, so much. Um, I thank God for the opportunity to share we were in leadership yesterday, and Minister Jeanette was praying, and she said something that was really profound to me. She said, um, God, let us spring forward. And when she said it, um, I said, wow, Miss Jeanette got bars. Uh, <laughs> but, and I started to think about it, about, about how we spring forward and how prophetically that we are about to spring forward. Is anybody excited about springing forward? Have you felt like you were like compressed and held back and not making any progress? I think that word was prophetic over this church and over the people listening that we are about to spring forward. You know, we have to pull back and sometimes that pulling back doesn't feel good. And anything, if you want to jump, you got to do this. Uh, you, you can't go very far if you, far if you don't recoil. And sometimes we get a little uneasy with that recoiling with, when the pressure pulls us back. But I believe prophetically that we're about to spring forward. Praise God if you're excited about that. That's not in my word. I just wanted to share that. That blessed me. I wanted to bless somebody else. Um, so let's jump into the word. Um, you know, we've been learning in 2016 about the kingdom of God. And, and, and we have been getting some great, great teaching. Heavy, heavy teaching important concepts for us as believers and um and and i started to try to do some research and to ponder over my notes that i've been taking um and do some exploring on my own and 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 and, 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 and there was an interesting um, article that i read and it was really talking about when is the kingdom of god is it is it now is it has it been established or is it to come and they were they're debating you see the scholars, the scholars jumped into it like, like, 
Like you read my notes. This 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 elder over here, he already knows. He got the answer. You know, ruined it. Like he killed my punchline. <laughs> but he's right. It is both, right? Uh, the the debate was is it is it the, the, was it established or when Jesus came or is is it to be established when he comes and 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 it is it is both in if you if you read in Luke chapter eleven it says but I am casting out if but if I am casting out demons by the power of God then the kingdom of, of God has arrived among you and as we search the scriptures and we see what Jesus did he in fact did cast out demons by the power of God so it told me that then the kingdom of God was now it was established when Jesus where he came. He came to establish the kingdom of God. But it is also to come because then I read in Revelation 22 when it says, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. He was talking about I am coming back to finish the work that I started. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So it made sense to me now that the kingdom of God was established and will be established. God is a God that, that he can't fit into our simple boxes, right? For our mind, he has to be either alpha or omega. You have to like me or you hate me. Like, you can't, you can't be both. But there's this duality in Christ that allows him to be alpha and the omega. Jesus is the first and last. He both initiated the kingdom of God. And he's coming back to finish the task. But I started to ask then, how do I apply this to me? Where do I fit in? Well, if he's the first and the last, what's going on in the middle? And God says, that's your space. That's where I fit in. So, because, you know, it, God, God, God's, God's plan did not exclude us. It's an amazing thing to think that God has included us in the plan. So whilst Jesus started it and will finish it, there is a place for me to come into partnership with his kingdom plan and be a part of his kingdom. It's a critical part, and God wants us to be a part of it. Matthew 25, 34 says, Then the king will say unto those on his right, Come, who are blessed by my father, inherit the king kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. It's important to know that from the beginning, God had a role for you in this kingdom. So it's not just, it's not just about coming into the kingdom and sitting down. It's about coming into the kingdom and being a part of it. It gives the Father good pleasures to give us the kingdom. So when Jesus left, he gave us the kingdom and says, you're supposed to do something with this. When Jesus was leaving, in Matthew 28, he says, it says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have, given you, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments that I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you even to the end of the earth. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses telling people about me everywhere. These are the last instructions Jesus gave, gave to his people. The work and, of establishing and expanding the kingdom of God rests within us. So, so it's interesting to me when, when, when God is leaving and he gives all these, these action words, go. Uh, he, he says, go and make. He says, baptize. He says, teach. He says, obey. He says, you'll be witnesses telling people. And I contrast that with what our church looks like when it's about, what, 10% of the people do, all, do, do 100% of the work? So now we have this, this, this mentality in modern churchdom where, where, where we, we sit and we receive. I want to receive from God today. I want to get from God today. God, what do you have for me today? God is looking back at you like, what you got from me? I done, I done given you all I got. I gave you my son. What do you have for me? But, 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 but there's this culture of, of, of relaxation and comfort and sitting back. God, 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 God invited us to do the work. He left the keys to the building. It's like when, when my parents used to leave us, leave us home, um, 
they would give a list of things to do. Anybody ever had chores to do? And, and, and I was a good kid. Those two over there were the bad kids. I got to my chores. I got doing what I had to do. I said, I'm not getting in trouble. And these two lazy sisters of mine would sit down and go watch TV and go do all the other stuff. But I was a good kid. But, 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 but the parents come back and the work is not done. The work isn't done. And then we sit back and pray, God, God, would you send the work to da, da, da. God is saying, listen, the work is here for you to do. And, and I'm not going to do some things because I entrusted you with the power, the authority for you to do. So we have to change mentality to now become not hearers of the word only, but doers of the word. And that gives me comfort because I feel like now I have some, I have some part in this. I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not something that's given to me that I can just throw away. It's something now that I'm given and there's an expectation to do something. There's, there's a kingdom mentality that has to permeate throughout the church in order for his kingdom to be seen in 2016. The kingdom of God will not be seen in 2016 if we as a church body don't do anything. We can pray for it. We can fast for it. We can, we, can, we, can, we can have all night prayers. We can do whatever we want. And it starts there. But until we get up and do, the kingdom will be manifested as we do. And that's for everybody. That's for everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care. Look, it's the amazing thing uh, as I read in the scriptures. When people had an encounter with Jesus, say they got healed. Jesus would say to them, don't say anything about what I did for you. Most of the time, people ran off and started telling. And these, these, these weren't the disciples that have been walking with him telling. These were people that had an encounter with Jesus, just one moment. And then they ran off and started telling and talking about the goodness of Jesus. Listen, you don't have to be saved for 10 years. You don't have to go to Bible school. You don't, you don't have to be saved for even two years, two minutes. As soon as God does something for you, there, you are ready. You are able to go out and start telling people about the goodness of God. So I want to spend a brief while talking about the kingdom mentality kingdom people have to have the kingdom mentality to do kingdom business we, we are talking in the youth group about uh, not being conformed to this world but being transformed by the renewing of the mind I think it's a message that says don't just do the things um, that everyone else does without thinking but let God change you by changing the way you think and we have to change our way we think. So I'm going to use Joseph. You know I like stories. I love the stories of the Bible. So I'm going to use Joseph to, 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 to really try to explore some themes around kingdom thinking. So Joseph was the 11th son of Jacob. Um, we find a story in Genesis 37 uh, when he was about 17 years old. And the interesting thing about Joseph uh, was his... So if you know the story of Jacob... Jacob, um, you know, he stole his brother's birthright. You know, he was a trickster. Uh, and um, amazing thing that God still used him, even though he was a trickster, it gave me hope um, that God could still use me. Um, um, <laughs> look, stop that. Um, that's the bad thing about having your family in church with you. you know, so, uh, uh, so, so, so here comes Jacob, and, and he goes and he, he, he starts to work for Laban. He meets Laban. Laban has two daughters. Uh, um, and, and one was very beautiful, Rachel. And one, you know, the Bible is really, uh, I don't like how it describes her. Like, it's, it's not the best description. But let's just say it says she wasn't that pretty. And uh, Rachel was unable to have children for a long time. And, and her sister was just uh, cranking out them babies. Um, super fertile. And and in that day, it was challenging for Rachel because, you know, I can't give my husband children. And um, finally, I'll make a long story short, uh, Rachel has Joseph. And the name Joseph means may God give increase. 
may God give increase. When she had Joseph, she she said, uh, no, God will add another. She was already looking forward to the next blessing when she had Joseph. She'd waited so long. She got a first son, and she says, may, she named him Joseph, which means may Jehovah add or give increase. It was interesting that Joseph's name meant that because if you look at the first 29 years of his life, he had n- significant decreases. His name means increase, but all through his life is significant decreases. First, he lost his mother when he was about seven years old in birth, giving birth to, 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 to his brother. And it was a tough labor and she didn't make it. And he lost his mother, a seven-year-old boy. Then he had a horrible relationship with his brothers. Now, remember that uh, there was beef in the camp. Uh, Fellas, get you one wife. Don't get two because God bless you. Uh, uh, (laughs) But but the two sisters were beefing. There was was trouble. There was animosity between those two. And, 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 And as always, it trickled down to the next generation. So... Joseph's brothers couldn't stand him, partly because he was a tattle, right? He, he, was, he, he was a snitch, right? Yeah. They'd go do something. He would go tell dad about it. Like, ah, come on, man. We, we really can't stand you right about now. Uh, so he had horrible rel- The Bible says his brothers hated him, hated him. Uh, then, then, then his father gave him, laced him with some nice clothes. He, he was, he was, he was doing nice, looking good. Uh, he, uh, and, and his brothers hated him even more and they took his coat away and they put him in a pit and they sold him into slavery. Like, man, you took my coat. I also put you in a pit and sold you into slavery. All right. All right. It, it, it was bad. And then, and then. And then he gets into slavery, he gets some position of power in Potiphar's house, and, 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 and then he gets lied upon because Potiphar's wife looked on him and, 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 and she wanted to have him, and he said no uh, for righteousness, and he said, I can't do this against God, and she lied. She cried rape and lied on him. And all this position is taken away, the thing that he would got. And then, and then finally, he was in prison, and he, got, he meets the right people. He was networking down in the jails. He's like, what you in for? Oh, yeah, right. So now you got, he does networking. They had a happy hour, and they went to networking in the jail. And, and, and he got the right connection. He finally made the right connections. The people that knew the king, he hooked them up. He told them the dream, and then they forgot about him. First 29 years of his life were rough, like, I know those are five things, but those are five major things. I mean, any one of them could send someone into a spiral. But his name meant increase, even though he was experiencing decrease. So, so, so what do you do when there's a destiny on your life, but everything is happening, making it look like it's opposite? What, what, what do you do? How do you handle it? How do you deal with it when when you are supposed to increase and expand, but it feels like everything is just being ripped away from you? You can't catch a break. What do you do? Let's look at five characteristics of David that of uh, Joseph that I think helped him. First of all, Joseph was a dreamer. God used the dream as a mechanism to reveal his divine plan for Joseph. Genesis 37, five, um, 37, starting at verse 5. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. We were out, we were out in a field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundles stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so do you think we will be our king? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream. Have you ever been hated because of your destiny or your purpose or your dream? But that's another story. Um, uh, Soon Joseph had, had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about it. He said, listen, I have had another dream. He said, the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time, he told his dream to his father as well as his brothers. But his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that, he asks. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? Yep. But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, 
His father wondered what the dream meant. Joseph was 17 year old, having this tough life. His mother was gone. He was in a hostile situation with his family. I think his home life would have been classified as a dysfunctional home. Truly dysfunctional. Can you imagine waking up and people just hating you in the morning? Like, you just, you just saw the bed and they just hate you. I just woke up, dude. Like, you just hate me already? I ain't even do nothing for the day. At least let me say good morning. And then you're like, I don't like how you say good morning. They hated him. And the person that loved him in the family loved him too much. Loved him too much. You say, how can you love somebody too much? He almost worshipped David. And he created a jealous environment with his family. So he was now loving David so much that it was making it hard in every other area. Not David, Joseph. He was making it hard in every other area of Joseph's life. His dad loved him too much. Things were out of proportion. In the midst of this less than ideal situation, God gave Joseph a glimpse into his future. Right in the middle of all the pain and all the chaos and the dysfunctional home, God can drop a word, a rainbow, a vision, a glimpse into your future. I don't care what it looks like. He can go and grab anybody at any time, no matter what the circumstances, and say, here's where I, I want to take you. Here's what I want to do, do, do in your life. And that's what God does for, for, for Joseph. In the middle of God's rejection, in the middle of Joseph's rejection, God revealed he would be honored. So he's being rejected by his brothers, right? Probably rejected by their mothers and everybody else was probably looking down on him because no mother was there to provide that love and protection, right? Her, she was gone. She had died. And now he, in the middle of all this rejection, God says, you will be honored. They will bow before you. I want to share some situations that are, are, are causing you pain and rejection. They will bow before you when before this is all done. So, 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 so here's Joseph, and he gets the dream. And, and interestingly enough, he takes the dream and he shares it with his brothers that hate him. Like, all right, Joe, let's talk. Uh, probably not the best idea to tell the people that hate you uh, that they're going to bow before you, right? <laughs> it's like, God told me you're going to bow before me, sucker. <laughs> like, come on, you drive turkeys, going to bow down. <laughs> right? Like, he probably went to the 70s on them. <laughs> and, and, and it's amazing that he would do that, but it resulted in him being hated even the more. Even the more. It made the situation worse. But, whereas it made others hate more, it gave Joseph the hope that he needed. The dream sustained Joseph when the situation looked hopeless. He believed, God, believed what God showed him, uh, even when the circumstances gave him every reason to give up. Some of us received the dream, but your current situation tells you that it can't come to pass. Maybe, maybe your situation is trying to kill your dream. Kill what God is. Like Joseph's brothers, uh, maybe there are situations around you that, and people around you that just don't like where God is taking you. you know, I don't like the term haters, but I think that's the perfect way to describe it. People just, just are trying to kill that dream and kill that purpose. Maybe the situation is trying to enslave your dream or trying to get you sold out into slavery. Now you're in bondage and now you have to obey situations around you. Feel like you have to obey circumstances around you that take you away from the dream, the destiny that God has placed in you. Maybe you relied upon and, 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 and your reputation uh, was, um, was ruined and now you're in bondage with anger and bitterness just like Joseph was. Maybe the situation betrayed you and you forgot about you where, where you thought that, hey, this is the thing that's going to take me out of here and I'm going to make it. I'm going to be able to do what God calls me. And it seems like you got forgot about. God is saying, hold on to what he said. Hold on to the dream he gave. Don't let go. 
He is working all these things out together for your good. If you would trust and not faint, you will see God change the situation around for you. And we'll get to the end of the story. I want to I caveat this, though. Um, Joseph's dream was confirmed. Um, so we have to be careful what we accept as God's dream. All right, so young people, right? You can get word. You can. I've learned that my feelings can create a word from God. Ain't nobody else had that say, had it happen to them. But, but like, I could want something so bad. I'd be walking down the street. I'd be like, oh, you see that? God is talking to me. That's him. He's in that cup. And it's a red cup. I wanted to go buy a red Ferrari. I'm in there, Jesus. <laughs> Knowing good and well that I ain't got the money for no Ferrari. The object of your affection can create a God that will make you feel. You will get comfort. You will get things that will make you. And then and the challenge is that the enemy is so shrewd and so smart. He'll take those desires and send things that look like confirmations from the word of God. And it will send your life spinning, chasing things that don't exist. Seen it happen a lot. So, so, so here's a tip. Whatever God says, you will line up precisely with his word. You won't have to fit anything in. You won't have to. You ever, you ever had to like kind of trim a corner off so it would fit in to the word of God? Like you had to like excuse this. Like it mostly fits, but I just got to slice this piece off. But you know what? The word of God is as sharp as a two-edged sword. So I can slice this situation off and fit it into the word of God. Glory. I'm sorry. It will line up exactly with the word of God and you won't have to shape, change, twist, adjust. Too many Christians are trying to put wrong, he- wrong pegs into a square hole saying it's the word of God. It ain't the word of God. It ain't, it ain't the dream. It ain't the dream. Listen, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a musician so bad. I ain't got no talent on Look, I'd be banging on the piano like, dee, dee. ah, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, boy. I wasn't supposed to be no musician. I wasn't supposed to do it. It just wasn't gifted for me to do that. I can sit and enjoy it and love it, but if I spent my life trying to fit myself into that mold, I wouldn't achieve the destiny that I know God has for me. And then God's word will be confirmed. Listen, if you are nervous about that vision, whatever God or dream or purpose or whatever God gave you, if you're nervous to bring it to pastors or somebody who God's the Holy Spirit, that's the first indication that something is wrong. I love, I love to see it with the young people, with the, with the little boyfriends and girlfriends that they bring. You got a little boyfriend? Yeah. Is he saved? Uh, well, he go to church. Like, like I can't judge him. Like, yeah, nah. like his mom got him back. Like, he got christened or baptized when he was a baby. And like one time, I was at church with him, and he looked like he was really, really listening. So, yeah, yeah, I, I really. And, I, and look, look, look. I, <laughs> I love this, and, and, and I'm picking on the kids, but uh, 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 all right, all right, I'm 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 gonna move off that square. It fits perfectly, and God will confirm His word. He confirmed it with Joseph with the second dream. Because when doubt could have come, when, his, when the negative voices from his brothers could have said, you, you think you're going to rule us? Like, we don't even like you. Like, what are you talking about? God was faithful to confirm it. So look for that confirmation. Okay. Second thing. Joseph was, wow, different. Uh, the Bible says that when Joseph was taken into Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an e- Egyptian officer. Pot- Potiphar was captain of the guard of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. 
It's interesting that God put him right where he needed to be. Um, uh, The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of the Egyptian masters. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar's soul. He soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He was put in charge of the entire household and everything he owned. There was something special about Joseph. It was evident to Potiphar from the time he saw how he carried himself and how he was moving and the things he was doing. He's like, this, this, this young boy is different. He's getting things done. Wait, everything I tell him, to tell him to do, he gets it done. I wonder if people could tell that we're different as kingdom people. Because the reality is that we are supposed to be different. You're supposed to look different, move different. There should be success in what we're doing. We're supposed to be coming, move into places of influence where we can now speak to and get to the place where we have the ability to affect change. Kingdom people need to be different. And, and, and the Bible specifies what made Joseph different. It says it was God with him. There's a pressure in society for, 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 for young people, for people in general to conform, to, to fit in. And that's, that's not what kingdom people do. That's, our theme for the year is not normal. We got some feedback that not normal apparently is not cool. So uh, it's not normal slash uncommon. Apparently that sounds cooler. Uh, uh, but the whole idea is that we want to not fit into the norms of society. We want to look differently. We want to walk differently. We want that people see us and say there's something different about that person. Romans 12, 2 is our theme for the year. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the, the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing. Now, I said it was different, and young people might automatically assume we are supposed to look crazy, but Joseph was decent also. Um, so, uh, Genesis 39 says, So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With, with Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. He just was worried about what I'm going to eat today because Joseph handled everything. Here's the key part. Joseph was very handsome and, well, and a well-built young man. So um, Joseph was probably that dude. Like he came into the, to the room and all eyes on me were playing, playing in the back. You know, he just walked in like, yeah. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, it's me. I'm in here. Everybody want to be like me, right? That was Joseph, right? Like, and and it's interesting because the Bible says that his mother was beautiful. She was a hottie, uh, and and so I have to imagine that those looks passed down to Joseph. So he was that decent boy. And if you look at every situation that Joseph was in, he rose to the top. Even in the pit, he rose to the top. Part of his first house, he rose to the top. Among his brothers, he rose to the top. When he was in the dungeon, he rose to the top. He was that dude. And, and, And as kingdom young people, as kingdom people, we don't have to look crazy. We can be just as decent. Like God has made you, the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know going through this teenage transition can be tough, right? It can be tough. Even, even as we get younger, there are insecurities, there are things there that we worry about. But Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So he had a dream. He was different. He was decent. But he was also disciplined. Um, uh, verse 7, chapter 39, verse 7, it says, And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Listen, when you're decent, people will look at you. When you're decent, opportunities will come. She said, Come and sleep with me. She demanded, she didn't ask. She was going to strong arm him. 
But Joseph refused. He said, look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire house. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. He had more respect for her and her husband than she did. It would be a great sin against God. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her. I wonder how many people would have begged. Joseph refused to sin when he could have. We live in a culture that is driven by passion and desires. Sadly, that mentality has crept into the church. And now we have a bunch of Christians who are enslaved to their feelings, their passions, their emotions and desires. It might not be sexual, but, 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 but you get mad and you lose all focus. Like, like you get bitter and you can't function anymore. Like, these feelings that we did not learn to control and discipline now run us. But we're, we're, we're in God's army, right? This, uh, we're, we're, we're soldiers in the army of God. They used to sing that. Things like discipline, integrity, unfortunately in our culture, are in short supply. And we have to change that tide. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26 and 27 says, So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. You have to train your body to do what it should. You have to train it. Like you have to be purposeful and make decisions to get your body, your mind, and, and bring it under subjection of what God says. Because if you don't, you'll be running around here wondering why you can't achieve, make ground, move further, why the kingdom is not being seen in your life. He was disciplined. Kingdom people have to be disciplined. Last one, and I'm done. Um, uh, he was destined. So, so Pharaoh asked his official, can we find anyone else like this man, so let me, let me back up. Uh, this is after Joseph, went, he went from Potiphar's house. His wife uh, accused him of, sleep, of, of trying to rape her. And Potiphar came home and threw him into prison. Um, he's in the prison. He, like I said, met two guys, cut beer and the, uh, and the baker. And he gave, they had dreams. And it's interesting that it came back to dream. And, G and, and Joseph was able to interpret the James dreams and what he said happened. And then the cupbearer got right back up there with Pharaoh. And when he was going, Joseph said to him, don't forget about me. And he forgot about him. He forgot about him. For two years, he forgot about him. And I can imagine how, how Joseph must have felt. Two years is a long time when you expect him to be free. Like, you, you're expecting that when you get up there, like, when he gets up there, he going he gonna to tell him. He going to tell him, and then they going to come and get me. And he probably was saying, yo, it's, it's been good doing time with you, you know. Uh, and I get out. I'm going to write you. I'm going to say, I'm going to put some money on your commissary. I'm going to take care of you. You know, you can have all my stuff. You know, I'm gonna like, I'm out. And then two years. Two years. Imagine what it felt like the first month. Ah, he probably didn't get, he probably had to give him no drink yet. He probably didn't get close to him. And six months later, and a year later, you ever been waiting on something from God and it feels like you just have been forgot? Just like, God, oh, when, when, when? Imagine the prayers he was praying in there. God, when? When are you going to change it? When are you going to free me? When am I going to be out of bondage? I'm tired of being in bondage. These chains are heavy. I can't go where I want. I can't do what I want. You said I was going to be a ruler. You said that they were going to bow for me. And now I can't, I can't even tell my own self when to go to bed and when to wake up because I'm in bondage. But he was destined. So Ferris asked his official, ah, so, so, so finally two years later, he remembered, the cupbearer remembered, and, and Ferris had a dream. And, 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 and no one else, no one else could interpret this dream. There are things that no one else can do. 
but you and God is crafting situations and circumstances that no one else can step into you and bring revelation but you even while you were in the prison even while you were in bondage while you're strapped down there are things that God has crafted for you to do that no one else can do so he comes out the cupbearer says, I remember a guy, and he said everything, and it happened exactly. So, 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 fair got him, and they cleaned him up. I love that part. I don't know why I love that part, but they shaved him, and they put some new clothes on him, and they brought him before Pharaoh. There it is. Say it again. Restoration. God is about to restore some things. He's about to shave some things and clean some things up off of you that, 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 that were on you for so long because of your situation. You are about to get free if you would receive this word. So, 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 so uh, uh, Pharaoh, they bring him to Pharaoh and Pharaoh says, listen, I got this dream and no one else can tell it. And, and Joseph said, he didn't say I could interpret the dream. He could say, yeah, uh, you know what? I've been dreaming since I was 17 years old. And you just let me know. And uh, I'm going to go into my, my, my cognitive and I'm going to interpret the dream for you because it's what I do. I you know, have a long track record of, of interpreting dreams. Uh, he said, I know a God and I serve a God that can enter. He gave God the glory. Hallelujah. He said, I know a God. He says, it's not about me. It's nothing that I can do. It all comes from God. So after he opens and he veils himself and he gives God the glory, God flows to him and he interprets the dream. And, 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 and interpreting the dream, he created a job description for himself. And, <laughs> and, and so, so he says, you know, here's what we need to happen. Here's what's going to happen. So you pro might probably want to put somebody in place uh, uh, to, 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 to govern all the food and everything. And um, not knowing that as he was interpreting the dream, that he was creating a position for himself. That his gift was making room for him. So he didn't have to fuss and fight. Just flowing in the anointing, flowing in the gifting that God has created for him, created a, a, a position for him. Now, we use that in church to find people who say, if you can sing, you just keep singing in the aisle and somebody going to hear you and say, like Marcus. Marcus can sing. How, how many of y'all? Where Marcus? Where Marcus? here in the office? Marcus can sing. I've been trying to get Marcus to come up here and sing in the choir for a long time. But that's another thing. But we use it in church. To say, he's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> he, we use it in church uh, uh, to say, if you can sing, just keep singing there, and eventually you're going to be up here with this mic singing. But it, it wasn't in church that this happened for Joseph. His gift, his God-given gift, put him to lead a country, basically. He was the second to Pharaoh. So it's not only applicable in church. It's applicable in anywhere, any sphere. I believe that we have young people here who will be in Congress, who will be next to the president, who will be next to governors, who will be leaders and directors. Your gift is not only for the church. It's for everybody. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm wrapping up, I promise you. So Pharaoh asks his official, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously, obviously filled with the Spirit of God? You got to get filled with the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dream to you. Now, this is Pharaoh, not a Christian, not a, 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 a this is an Egyptian Pharaoh, right? <laughs> saying that he's filled with the Spirit of God. And that, 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 that uh, since God has revealed this to you, this isn't Jacob, this isn't Abraham, this isn't one of the prophets, this is Pharaoh. Your, 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 your witness can touch anybody. All right, let's keep going. Since God has revealed the meaning of this dream to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or as wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I sitting on my throne will have a rank higher than yours. 
Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet, the ring from his hand, and placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in fine linen, clothing and hung clo fine linen clothing, and hung a gold chain around his neck. Then he had Joseph ride in the chariot reserved for his second in command. And whenever Joseph went, <laughs> wherever Joseph went, the command was shouted, "Kneel down!" So that Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him. I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire land of Je Egypt without your approval. <laughs> Joseph went through a lot. He went through a lot. In the end, what God said about him came to pass. The dream in the end was fulfilled. He was destined. Destined mean to be to decree beforehand, to predetermine. It means to designate, to assign, to dedicate in advance. Look, they, look, with us, God has destined us and designated certain things that will happen where we will get to certain places as kingdom people so that we can now function to expand his territory. The amazing thing is that um, it wasn't about Joseph. It was about the people of Israel having a refuge in the time of famine. So now God elevated him to a position of influence so that now when there was trouble, the people had somewhere to run to. And as the people ran, they went into Egypt. And then the Bible says that they expanded, the people of, of Israel expanded and multiplied in Egypt. So much so, so much so that they were attacked because of how big they were getting, how successful, because God was blessing them. Well, you might say, well, then they got put in, in, into to bondage and slavery. Well, that's okay, because there was a Moses coming to take them out. And then there was a Jacob, uh, J uh, Joshua coming to take them into Canaan. And then there was a David coming. What am I saying? Each person has a part to play in expanding and ex establishing this kingdom of God. I told you at the beginning he was the first and the last. We have a middle piece to play. And it's like a relay race. I love relay races. Because the person running, you run your part, you run to the best of your ability. But then you give me that bat on. And my expectation is that I put it, I put it all on the line. And I run to the next person. And I equip them with what they need to now move forward and expand and establish the kingdom of God. I need you to understand that nothing stops kingdom purpose or power. Nothing stops kingdom purpose or power. Look, Joseph survived bad parenting, bad siblings, a bad boss, bad women, and bad friends. Nothing stopped his destiny. Nothing stopped his purpose. None of the circumstances God Joseph faced could stop the dream that was placed in him when he was a young boy. Nothing disqualified him. Nothing could stop him. The pit was designed to kill Joseph, but to kill Joseph's dream, but God delivered him. Potiphar's house was designed to bring compromise to David's life, but he walked in God's righteousness. The prison was designed to bring bondage, but Joseph saw God's promotion. Psalms 33, 11. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. The Lord of heaven's army, this is Isaiah 14, 27. The Lord of heaven's armies has spoken. Who can change his plans? When his hand is raised, who can stop him? Kingdom people are destined to reign. We may have to have a pit stop along the way. We may be falsely accused in Potiphar's house. We may even be in bondage in prison. But remember the dream that God has placed in you. Because nothing can stop 
the dream that God says. Nothing can hinder what God wants to do. I don't care what it is, what you're facing, what is trying to hold you back, what is putting you in bondage. I don't care who is talking about you, who says you won't do it. I don't care who is ridiculing you. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what the thoughts in your head are saying. You can't do it. You won't make it. There is nothing that can stop what God is doing. Nothing. His plans don't change. They won't change. I don't care. I, 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 as I was, I was pulling this together, uh, God said to me that he was going to reestablish and restore some people's dreams because there are some dreams and some purposes that people have walked away from in defeat and thought that it couldn't happen, that things were happening in your life, circumstances that made you feel like it will not happen, and you did like this, you stepped back from it, and you threw your hands up. But faith is here this morning to reestablish. The Holy Spirit is here to reestablish the dream, the purpose, the ministry, that vision that God gave you. It will be established. It will come to pass. And then I need somebody to pray, to stand up on your feet. If you, ah, Jesus, God will not be stopped. His plans for your life will not be stopped. His plans for your life will not be stopped. They will not be hindered. There's a new dream coming. There's a reestablish, a reconnecting of the dreams, the purpose that God has placed in you. You thought it would not happen. You thought you could not get there. But in the name of Jesus, I speak to the dry bones. I speak to the dry places. I speak to the graveyard of dreams. I speak to the graveyard of potential. I speak to the graveyard of visions. And I say in the name of Jesus, walk, live. I pray that the rule of God would just blow through in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray for two people, two groups of people. First, I want to pray for those who don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. The dreams come from him. Destiny comes from him. Purpose comes from him. Can't get it in anywhere else. Can't get it from a boy. Can't get it from a girl. Can't get it from a career. Can't get it from a job. Can't get it from a bottle. Can't get it from a party. Can't get it from music. Can't get it from your mama, can't get it from your daddy. It comes from God. He created you for a purpose. And if you don't know him, if you don't have relationship with him, or if you had relationship and you fell away, he is here to love you. And all he wants to do is reconnect with you and connect with you. He wants to restore purpose to your life. He wants to give you purpose. So if